Half of all of the emissions that we have produced in the entire history of humanity, from the burning of fossil fuels, have come in the last 30 years. And what that means is that we've done all that damage, half of all the damage we've ever done, knowingly. For me, the speed of climate change is one of the most terrifying aspects about it, and really, for a long time, I think, underappreciated. When I was growing up, I was told again and again, and I continued to read as an adult, that climate change was a very slow process. In fact, a lot of scientists worried that it was so slow, we wouldn't respond to it. James Hansen was one of the most alarmist climate scientists out there. His book for a general audience is called Storms of My Grandchildren, and that's the time scale that we were told we were dealing with. We have not just not taken adequate action, we have made the problem worse almost every single year, setting new records every year for carbon emissions globally. There are some countries whose emissions are going down a little bit, but not many, and they're not going down by much. And when you take in the full picture, it's very much not the case, as a lot of people think, that we're moving in the right direction, but not fast enough. To judge by emissions, we're still moving in the wrong direction. I'm 36 years old, which means my lifetime contains that entire story. When I was born, Scientists were concerned about the future, the far future, but in the medium term, they thought that the planet's climate was stable. The year I was born, the planet's carbon concentration was 340. Some scientists think that the threshold of safety is 350 parts per million, which means the year that I was born, we had a buffer of 10 parts per million, and in the 36 years since, we've added 86. We had a buffer of 10 and we've added 86. That's just how much damage we're doing every year. As long as we continue on that path, producing that much carbon going forward, we're going to have to remove that much carbon in the future in one form or another. We have brought the planet from a stable situation to the brink of catastrophe, and now we have the responsibility to secure the future of the Earth, the climate, and all of us living on it in that same amount of time. That is a drama that we used to only recognize in mythology and theology. According to the UN, as soon as 2050, we could have as many as 200 million climate refugees. We're seeing a little test case of this with the Syrian refugee crisis that has scrambled European politics, but that was only produced by 1 million. And the UN says, we're gonna have 200 million by 2050. They think it's possible we could have 1 billion by 2050, which is as many people as today live in North and South America combined. If we see that kind of warming producing that amount of refugees, first of all, we're gonna be seeing the total disappearance, the abandonment of communities that are so large, we used to think of them as whole civilizations. Homelands will disappear because their people will flee from them. They may go underwater, they may burn, who knows, but the populations will be gone. That means that whole cultures will no longer be part of the human tapestry that we have today. We have our hands on those levers. We are writing the story of the future of the climate ourselves. And when I say writing, I mean it because we are protagonists too. We are determining this future, each of us every day with what we do, primarily through politics, but in other ways as well. And it will be because of what we do as a species in these next decades. So if we've done all of that dramatic damage in just 30 years, we now have about that much time to secure a livable, prosperous, and just future for all of us. And that to me is the most urgent, strongest, important message about climate change generally. If it's happening as fast as it is, and we're seeing all the impacts that we're already seeing, which we are, that means that we need to be responding just as quickly, just as dramatically to change course. Otherwise, we will find ourselves in a world that no one alive today would consider happily livable or satisfying or fulfilling.